What's up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of AGR's Pop Culture Reviews. Now, as I mentioned before, I was going to get really started to crank up these reviews, and I wanted to sprinkle in some of the new stuff, as well as some of the old stuff as well. Now, I've been waiting for this figure ever since it was announced. It's just freaking awesome, guys. And I have to say, I haven't been as up-to-date with the G.I. Joe comics in a couple of years, but after the announcement of this figure, it certainly sparked my interest once again. Now, Don Moreno is a very interesting character. Aside from being a Hispanic female badass, she also had the heavy responsibility of taking on the mantle of a very popular character after his death. Now, I don't want to spoil anything too much, but there is a direct link, so it's not just a name change. She is actually the embodiment of this character, which is a little bit convoluted, but we'll get there. I'll explain. Now, Moreno actually makes her comic debut in G.I. Joe's issue number 226 in a very bizarre way. Apparently, she's trying out for the Cobra High School lacrosse team. I don't know. I, I didn't know that was a thing. Apparently, she got the attention of the right people, namely Cobra Commander, took her under her wing, and she starts making regular appearances in the comics. Now, continuing her story arc gets a little bit convoluted and confusing, and I could see how people would just think that she's the female version of Snake Eyes, but that's not necessarily the case. In fact, there's a whole bunch of fuckery that happens that actually turns her into Snake Eyes, namely a kind of snafu with Dr. Mindbender's indoctrination program. Evidently, they accidentally download Snake Eyes' memories into Dawn, and then she becomes Snake Eyes 2. So she's not just a female version, she's actually the downloaded embodiment of the memories of the previous Joe member. I know, it sounds weird, but you know, it's the comics, these things happen. Now there's a whole bunch of other stuff that ensues before she's actually given the mantle of Snake Eyes. And for those of you who are always digging for those first appearance comics, it's actually issue number 244 at the end where she's given the Snake Eyes kind of costume. But her first official cover appearance with the new Snake Eyes outfit is actually issue number 245. But it seems to me like the really big deal is actually the cover for issue 246 and it actually has multiple covers. This is actually a really cool cover, guys, so I think between 244, 245, and 246, if you guys are looking for those first appearance collector's items, that's really the way to go. And if you really want to compliment those amazing comics, I recommend this piece. Today we're going to be reviewing Kotobukiya's version of G.I. Joe's Don Moreno, aka Snake Eyes 2, the Bishoujo statue. Let's take a closer look. God, I remember seeing the concept photos for this, and I just was like, holy shit. That is a badass looking character, and it actually prompted me to do my research and start reading those comics. And I gotta say, they're pretty badass guys, even though, you know, the story gets a little bit weird. Nevertheless, this head sculpt is absolutely brilliant, guys. A perfect recreation of what we see in the comics, even though it is Kotobokiya-esque. I like the shine of the helmet, the visor color looks great. Again, it's not exactly red, it's kind of like a rose color, which is really cool, guys. The stance here is amazing, and just take a look at the hair sculpt. That looks freaking awesome guys the way that's blowing in the wind amazing the midsection and upper torso of this piece is really interesting there's a lot going on here especially in the textures now the color palette is magnificent again i love that rose petal color it really offsets against the black and especially that gray tone in the center and especially in between her bosom that little, I, I don't even know what that is. It just looks really cool, guys. The armor plates on her shoulders look really awesome as well. And there's kind of like a wash at the end of it. And just take a look at her belt buckle. Everything looks really cool, guys. And she looks really sexy the way she's got her hand on her hip. The gauntlet is really well done, guys. I think overall, everything looks really good here. And I know it really draws your eye. You know, Kotobukiya does some interesting stances and they have a way of being able to be really profound and powerful and being understated at the same time. I mean, just look at her thigh there. The textures on the actual red parts of the costume are really done well. The creases in the crotch area, especially where the leotard ends, is done very well also. I think those are nice touches, and I do like the sculpt in the actual buckles and the pouch. But where this thing really shines for me is definitely in the boots. I mean, those look almost like cybernetic boots. I love that gunmetal. There's so much detail there. It's just so cool, guys. I mean, again, everything working in tangent looks really nice, guys. And if you look at the boots, they're actually modularized in terms of the armor set. It's just very impressive. Now, Moreno is actually sporting two katanas, which I have to say, I'm very impressed. At this scale, the level of detail here, just took a look at the handle 
and you also have that nice color palette there. The hilt is very well done. I especially love the wash on it, and that gold really accents the silver blade. It's almost the entire length of the figure as well. It's very pronounced, guys. Again, they made it a focal point for a reason, and I think they succeeded very well in drawing your eye in. Even though she's got it slung over her shoulder, it still really is a focal point. Now, without question, you definitely want to mirror this piece because there is an incredible amount of detail on the reverse side. Now, let's start with the katanas themselves. The sheaths for the katanas are done in an X pattern, which is really awesome. She has one of her katanas sheathed, and what's really impressive is that it's actually running through the hair sculpt. And look at the hair sculpt itself. Amazing. Some amazing fan service here, guys. Some of the best I've ever seen with some great shadowing and shading looks amazing. And we also get a greater appreciation of how she's actually attached to the base, which is really cool, guys. It's very simplistic. Now, one of the other aspects that I really love about this piece is the third sword. I mean, the style of it is just amazing, guys. Now, you would think that it's just monotone and it's all black, but it's actually a lot more detail once you see it in person. The gunmetal offset against that black looks great, and it does have some kind of purple insignias just above the hilt of the actual sword itself. I love the way that it's sticking into the actual base. It's a really nice illusion, guys, and it gives this base and the figure itself a nice sense of three dimension. I think it's a really good job. Now, I was purposefully not talking about that third sword because I don't want to spoil anything because, you know, you got to read the comics. Anyways, I am so glad that they did the base in the color palette that they did. That solid white, which has a bunch of scarring and chips and stuff like that looks really cool guys and then of course you have the red cobra insignia which looks really well guys i have to say the color palette the fact that it contrasts so much with the kind of darker tones of the actual figure itself and i also like the very thin profile which is always good for me i know people are always going to say you always give a holy grail rating for a kotobopia piece but that's because they're really awesome so yes guys this is definitely a holy grail piece this is just such an extraordinary piece. It's a concept photo brought to life without them messing with it, and that just makes it extraordinary. The other thing too is that there's actually an alternate version with a different head sculpt and she's donning the Storm Shadow costume, which I'm going to be reviewing as well. Now before I go, I just want to thank Japan at Market for sending this wonderful piece over for review. Alright everybody, so that's my official review of Kotobukiya's version of the G.I. Joe Don Moreno Snake Eyes 2 the Shoujo Statue. As always, I thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next AGR's Pop Culture Reviews.